So I realized, hi, that uh, I did not give you all an alert to let you know that I was going live, but we are here to show you a different uh, type of planting. And I know a lot of people, um, oh, okay, am I still on? Oh, I am. Anyway, um, this is a Jiffy um, greenhouse set that I'm using. Refresh it. We're using the peat pots. And these come with, uh, they're already, they already have your seed mixture in the peat pot. So they come in little discs like this. Let's see if we can. And what what's happened is, uh, Jiffy, the brand, or whoever they count on to make their uh, peat discs, um, create a mixture, a seed mixture, where they flatten it into netting. This is netting that supports it. And then they flatten it into cubes. These little holes we're going to open up when they are um, full of water. And then we're going to plant our seeds. So, the easiest way to do this, because they only give you six plant markers, which is stupid, because you have 12 rolls, and then um, I'm guessing they expect you to plant six rolls of the same thing. We do not do that, because we do square foot planting. If you are going to plant that way, then by all means, use your plant markers so that you remember what you're planting. But we don't do it that way, because we always either lose the plant markers, we break them, or whatever we write with ends up um, coming off. Uh, we still haven't figured out how to use these things. I hate them, so I don't use them. But what we do is we mark numbers inside with a Sharpie, which is not coming off. And I use a um, bronze Sharpie, or you can use a silver one or a white one. Obviously, you can't use a black one because you won't see it. Duh. Uh, but that's what I use. And then I mark the insides. Um, and the outside if you can, and then I number the tray that I'm planting in. So this tray happens to be tray number seven from our trays that we've been planting in. Uh, the first five trays were soil blocks, which you saw me make a couple days ago. These we're going to do the discs because we have them and we're waiting on other things. So we're going to take 10 cups, no, eight cups, sorry, of semi-warm water and we're going to pour it over. all of the discs and you're gonna let this soak into them you can you want to use warm water because warm water permeates the discs uh, quicker than cold water would and what you're gonna do is you're gonna let them soak in until they start expanding you're gonna give them a couple of minutes and then whatever liquid is left over you're gonna pour off typically there's not a lot of liquid left over so you don't have to pour them off and then we'll fluff them and then open up the netting a little bit more We might have to so they should start fluffing up um but while we're waiting for those to fluff we can show you i just did a tray earlier today and we planted beans and all of that other stuff um in them and with these what happens is you can plant the entire pot it looks uh the netting looks like that you take them off and you plant the entire thing in whatever container or in ground if you want it. Uh, we tend to open them up a little bit more um, when we do it and then um, plant them in our raised beds. There are pros and cons from doing it this way. Uh, the pros are they're already preset for you. You don't have to worry about mixing any of your own soil like we did with the, with the soil blocks. You don't have to worry about putting fertilizer in. They're already in there. It's already in there. Um, you don't have to worry about buying separate uh, containers or blocks. Now, what you can do after you're done with these for the season, you can buy these um, pots separately in a, in a box. And they come in a box of like 36 and you can just re reset them, which means that you have to save and take care of these. They're flimsy though. They're not nearly as strong as they could be. Uh, so you do have to take care of them after you've used them for the season. 
And before using them again, since this one was brand new, I didn't have to do it. But before using them again, you want to sanitize your seed trays so that you get rid of any possible disease or things that could have been in the in the tray. Okay, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to pour this water off and we're going to pour warm, warm water on. Because it's not going as quickly as I want it to. And I'm impatient. I'm sorry. But while we're waiting, I will show you what will be coming up, what I'll be showing. And the reason I'm going live on my page as opposed to the We Sow, We Grow page is I want to encourage you all to join the group if you are growing anything, even if you're growing houseplants. You want to join the group because it's a collective place where we all enjoy talking about plants. And I don't want to brag, but uh, I've been doing this for a while. So we will be showing you how to plant potatoes next week. And we do our potatoes. We'll be doing our potatoes in grow bags instead of in hills um, because we don't have that much land. So we have to make do with what we have. So we'll be using grow bags and I'll show you how to use those. But we're going to pour this off because the water's still a little bit too cold. Um, the joys of living in Chicago and having pipes that are still freezing, even though it's almost 70 degrees outside. Can you pour that off for me? Thank you. So today we're going to be planting our larger um, plants. We're going to be planting some melons and um, things that will take up uh, one spot in our square foot garden. And if you're not familiar with square foot gardening, it is where you um, create a raised bed and you uh, portion it out into square, square feet. So we grow in beds that are four feet by eight feet, which means that we have 32 square feet of growing space in our beds. And each of those square feet can take between one and 16 plants, depending on how how large they are or how large they grow. So a lot of our one square foot plants, such as watermelon, um, um, cantaloupe, honeydew, any melons, uh, collard greens take one square foot, um, depending on the type of kale we're growing, that will fit into one square foot. And then you have things that can be four to a square foot. and there's a, a bit of discrepancy about this. Some people do corn four to one square foot and some people do corn only one per square foot. It depends on how you grow. We've grown them successfully both ways. Um, and then you have items like arugula where you can put 16 arugula plants in one square foot. Uh, same with radishes, depending on how, how um, small they are. So now you'll see I use warmer water. It's starting to open up a little bit more and you know, it's, it's helping get those uh, pots open. So what's going to happen is they're going to grow higher. And then the um, mixture, the seed planting mixture is going to fluff up a little bit. And then we'll open it and we'll start planting. And you can feel free to ask any questions. Um, I will answer as we're going. So you can get real-time answers. And if you are interested in joining the group, we'll have the link put into the comments right now. And you all can join. You can request to join and I'll have one of my moderators bring you in. So you'll see now a lot of the, the pellets are leaving the water from below the water. They're growing up. This is what we used when we first started um, our backyard garden when we moved over here. Uh, it's what we could afford because we were growing just for ourselves at the time. This worked very well for us. Um, and for what we need it to do. I don't have an issue with these. It's just that for the amount of growing that we do, this is not fiscally, um, um, it's not cost effective for us. So if you have a small backyard garden, you can use this, no problems. It's not a crappy product at all. You don't have to worry about um, or think that you have a subpar, mm -hmm. a subpar product. Uh, this is this is great for backyard gardeners. 
Now, if you have a massive backyard and you're using all of your backyard to grow things, I would suggest something like soil blocking because that way you can plant way more seeds in the same tray, space tray, and you can, you can nest box them up. Oh, you hear my chickens? Yeah, they're, they're chickens in the back. We have, um, nine now because they, one of their sisters decided to take a walk around the neighborhood and she has not come back. So I fear that she has either become somebody's quarantine food or she's found one of the neighborhood uh, roosters and is shacking up with him somewhere. And I'll end up with baby chicks when she comes back. And they are able to come back home, but I think because we live in a more urban space, it's a little bit more difficult for that to happen. Because there are lots of roads and cars and everything. So um, they're, they're coming, they're coming along and we can help them, but the bottoms of the pellets are still pretty hard. So today, I'm going to be planting, I need the melons. No. We're going to do our melons. Um, the only things, the things that I wouldn't suggest that you put in here are any root vegetables. So no carrots, no radishes, uh, no beets, no parsnips, nothing that you have to dig out. I mean, technically, they could work. Uh, but you'd have netting around it, and that might deter it from getting them from getting as large as they could. Uh, you don't have to worry about roots not being able to go through these because roots are hardcore. They can push through almost anything. And the netting is pretty um, simple, and it's not, uh, it's not super tight. Um, the, the weave of the netting is tight, but it's not made up of a material that is super strong so nothing's going to get through it so when you you'll see we can rip these open so roots root systems will be able to rip them open when we do go and clean up our our farm and clean out the raised beds and we are removing um the plants after they've you know died back when we do pull them up we oftentimes get these uh, uh this netting and you'll see the water is is soaking in you'll see it disappearing all around and it's, it's going from around the, the plastic. I don't know if you see that happening, but it's pretty cool. And you'll know that it's being soaked up properly. If after like five minutes or 10 minutes, uh, all of the water hasn't soaked in, you just pour the excess off because you have enough water in here to start your seeds. Okay. We want to make sure that that's clear as mud. Okay. So we're going to start um, with our first column. But we're going to open all of these first and then fluff them. And, you know, uh, I know we all hate being inside, but this is one of those things where um, I'm kind of grateful for the forced slowdown because I'm actually getting it done. Whereas if we were able to run all over the place, this would still take a back burner and then I'd be planting things uh, super late or starting seeds super late or blowing my budget by going and getting uh, plants that have already been started. Once again, this is a dirty process. If you are afraid of dirt, you can always put gloves on it. I don't know. I don't like having gloves on because it just, I don't, you need to feel, I feel like you need to feel the stuff. I don't know. It's just weird. You need, Need your fingers. Gloves getting in the way. So we're gonna open these. If this was a pre-recorded show, I could time lapse it for you and then you wouldn't have to sit and watch. But we're gonna start. I'm going to cheat and start in the in the middle. We're gonna do rows four and five since I've already opened those netting. And then you don't have to watch me open all of the nets. And the reason that I don't do all the way across is because we grow so much and most of our squares are six. We don't do too many that are 16. Those squares that we do in the raised bed that can do 16, we plant directly outside when it gets warm enough because those plants are going to um, 
be harvestable in less than a month. So we don't have to worry about starting them in seeds. And we are going to do melons. And we have a large variety. Uh, this is not all of the watermelon that I have. So we have Jubilee, Sugar Baby, Crimson Sweet, which ripped. Uh, watermelon Congo, which um, we can get to 40 pounds or more. And then another Crimson Sweet, obviously, because we like those a lot. And then we have a Carolina Cross, which I really, really, really want to grow properly because these things can get up to 200 pounds. And I dare someone to try to take that off of our farm and walk away with it without giving themselves away. Okay, so we're gonna do six in number four. And you just put them in. The Obviously the largest seeds need to be pushed down into the uh, soil pots because you're gonna have to cover them. And when we cover, I like to have the kids do this but you can push it up and then you cover it with the soil that's in there, okay? I've been up since about six this morning because we had a massive thunderstorm that only the dog and I heard. Everybody else stayed asleep and that also lets me know that if I were in a horror movie, everybody would die but me. Everybody, because nobody would wake up. And we tend to do some very interesting, uh, we like to have a little bit of fun with, with what we plant and we try some new things. So we're gonna try the Kazakh melon and then a Tigger melon. And we're going to see how those grow. We've never grown. We grew the Kazakh uh, a couple years ago. And I think we only got two. It depends on how you're storing them. Your seed packs should be stored in a cool, dry place. Um, I have some seeds that uh, someone gifted me that are probably, I think, five years old. And they're sun sugar tomatoes. And we planted them last year. And they sprouted, they germinated very well. When you have seed packets that you know that you've had for years, you should plant more than what you need because you don't know what the germination rate is going to be. Um, and you can, you know, uh, test it out that way. I know that a lot of people don't like doing it that way because they feel that it's a waste of material, but there's no guarantee that all of your seeds are going to germinate anyway. And if you're planting directly outside, you have to remember that you are fighting against uh, animals and that there are animals that will go and dig up your seeds and eat them because they're hungry. Um, we just experienced that with some seeds that we had out on in our, in our greenhouse. And I went to check on them and found that a mouse had gotten into them. And what they do is they take the seed out, break it open and eat the inside of it and then leave the, the shell. And they're jerks. I mean, they're jerks either way, but they're really jerky for doing things like that. They also will eat our uh, cantaloupe and our honeydew. Um, they will chew a hole into the bottom of the of the honeydew melon, eat through out the entire honeydew, so you think that you have an entire one left. And then when you go to pick it, all of the seeds fall out because they're givers. So this one, we're planting the Tigger melon, and this one is going into our fifth. Now you'll notice I'm not pushing these as far down because they're a smaller seed than what I planted from the watermelon. And I wanna show you, actually, that's a good, you can get another one out of the basket. This is a good time to show variations in seeds. That's the Carolina Cross watermelon seed. Oh, let's see if it clears up. There we go. And there's the Tigger 
melon that we're planting in row five. So that's a massive, it's actually a massive watermelon seed because if you compare it to the watermelon seeds, I think that we're used to seeing, you'll see how, how much larger it is. So that's gonna be a pretty big melon. And this is a crimson sweet watermelon seed that I just pulled out. Crimson sweet, Carolina cross watermelon, and a tigger melon. Now, I also want to take time to let you all know Watermelons are not GMO um, plants at all. Uh, you can make them hybrids. So you can take, you can cross different traits from, from um, different uh, melon traits that you want. So if you want one bigger or sweeter, or you want one uh, that's going to produce a certain amount, then you can do hybrids. They are not GMO. So if you see a massive watermelon, it's not a GMO. Um, Seed at all. Uh, depth of. Oh, that will help you. That will help you plant. Uh, you can get what's called a dibbler. Um, if you go to Amazon.com, I know you don't have to purchase from there, but it'll show you. Amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash HF of Nichols, my last name, N I C H O L E S. I have a homesteading shop there, and you can see all of the tools that we use. And there's a dibbler, and what will happen is the dibbler looks like a pointed um, metal tool. Sometimes they're wooden, uh, sometimes they're metal, sometimes they're plastic, and they should have markings on it that say one eighth, one fourth, half, and whole, or one, and those are inches. You can use those for, for inches. And they also have rulers, yeah. They also have rulers that will space for you. So um, in the group, I just did a video on how to read a seed packet. And the seed packet should always tell you how to plant. Okay, your planting instructions. It tells you how deep to go and then how, how far apart those plants should be when you plant them. And then how far apart the rows should be when you plant the rows. Okay? I know it sounds like a lot. And there's a lot of preparation to get your seed from seed to harvest. <coughs> but if you start this early enough, then you don't have to worry about racing against a shortened season, which a lot of Northern states have. So because I'm in Chicago, there is a very small amount of time to grow unless we have a greenhouse or a hoop house. And we don't have a large enough one right now to be able to grow all year long. That's one of our large goals for the farm is to get a hoop house so we can sell produce and produce pr produce things all year long uh, for the community. But right now we're working with what we have, and that means starting seeds early. We should have been starting in February with a lot of the larger um, plants that need growing time, larger growing time, longer growing time, sorry. Those are tomatoes, um, peppers. Peppers require a ridiculous amount of time to grow, typically 100 to 130 days. And that's from planting the seed to harvesting. And last year, we planted peppers in May and didn't, we weren't able to harvest them until October. That's when they started growing. That's when they started growing. So um, you start early. No, the homesteading. Yep. You start early so that you give yourself enough time to be able to reap the literal fruits of, of your labor. Okay, so we're going to continue growing. If you have questions, uh, Shamari is reading them off to me. Don't be afraid to ask them. Please ask while you sit and watch us figure out what the heck we're planting and how. Now, after this is done, let me show you what you're going to do. So you're going to get all of these planted. Okay, you're going to put your lid over it. And you may think that this is counterintuitive because there's no breathing, there's no, there are no air holes in this. What you're doing is creating a greenhouse. And they need this heat um, and the humidity in order to germinate. We don't have a massive amount of space in our house. Uh, so what we do, um, and I hate it a lot, is we crank up the heat. I don't like hot houses at all. I sleep with the window open and the fan on in the wintertime. But we'll crank up the heat to above 70 degrees because most of them need 70 and above 65 to be able to germinate. 
and we put them on a vent. You only need to leave them on that vent until they all germinate. Once they've germinated, you can take this off and then you continue caring for them um, until it's time to transplant them or put them in larger, larger pots. Now, what'll happen is you'll see all of these will pop up um, two leaves. Those are not true leaves at all. Those are just the leaves that they um, use to be able to photosynthesize. Yay, botany. And they will grow their second set of leaves, which are their true leaves, which let you know that they're doing well. Do not bother your plants until their second set of leaves are visible, no matter what you want to do. Now, you'll see that for this video, I only planted one seed per pot. You're not going to do that with um, seeds like cabbage. So it's a massive cabbage, right? It's also all seasons, which means that it'll do well in spring, summer, winter, or fall. You can leave these. But look at the size of that seed. And there's no guarantee that if you plant one at a time, they're going to germinate. So you want to plant a couple, three at the most, when you have seeds like this. Plant three, four, if you're living dangerously. And once they germinate, you can do what we call thinning. Now, if you have enough of these or enough soil, what you can do is um, gingerly separate those roots while they're younger and you can repot them into other soil and then you'll have four plants instead of thinning and then throwing them away. But you're going to have to thin because if you leave four cabbage seeds in there and you let them continue to grow, their roots are gonna fight um, like a lot of our children are, being in the same house. And they're fighting for nutrients and space and the ability to spread out, okay? And if you have four plants in there, four different root systems are vying for um, the top. And you don't want that to happen. So you can you can separate the plants and then replant the ones that you thinned early on. No, they'll look like crap possibly for a while. They may, might not all make it. But you can do that and test it out. Or you can chuck the three and then leave the one that looks the best. Okay? But you need to thin things that are going to get large like cabbage and your greens and everything. Um, I tend to not thin arugula or... Um, Salad lettuce, lettuces that aren't going to form into heads or romaine because I'm constantly harvesting that. I don't thin spinach either when I plant it. We have not thinned um, radishes when we plant them because they will move each other out of the way anyway in order to um, establish their root system. And radishes only have that one long root and they send out smaller tap roots from the root system but they're not, they're not spreading all the way across the, the raised bed. So you don't have to worry about that. So those you don't have to thin. Carrots, you may want to, okay? This is all up to you. And in gardening, you have the freedom to play around with smaller things like that so you know what to do for next season. Excuse me for one moment. Okay, so um, we're going to continue to plant. I don't know if the link has been posted in the comments for We So We Grow Gardening Chat. You can request access there. We'll get you in as soon as possible. Uh, and we do gardening clinics every week where I come on and answer questions to the best of my ability. While I may be ha -ha, a master urban farmer, I was certified last year. Thank you, thank you. Um, there are other people who are more knowledgeable about certain things than I am because they've been growing longer or that is just their favorite thing to grow and they've just put their heart and soul into it. Um, we have a member, uh, Lovey, who is a um, uh, uh, genius with growing strawberries and basil. She just does a very good job with it and she's in a northern state. So she's also one of my moderators. And she is full of, of wisdom with things like that. We have Andrew Burchett, who's also one of my moderators, and he is um, fantastic with growing 
uh, carrots and tomatoes. He also has a very good basement system, seed starting system, where he shows you how to use grow lights to the best of your ability um, to work for you, obviously, so that you do have very strong plants to put out when you have to transplant. Uh, we have another uh, mod, MJ, who is fabulous in general with growing indoor plants and with her outdoor garden. And then we have a bunch of members, you know, who are amazing. Uh, Mimi is great with her garden in Georgia. I'm a little bit jealous of those folks that live in Georgia and Florida right now because they are growing all the things and there are so many big green leafy vegetables in their raised beds and their gardens are so pretty and they're serene and they look so comforting and relaxing. So um, we do suffer from a bit of garden envy this way. I'm not above admitting that. Uh, but the group is there for you to talk about gardening, farming, whatever you want to call it. You want to call it urban gardening, urban farming. You want to call it regular farming. You want to call it gardening. You want to call yourself a plant lady. Everybody is welcome. It started as a food-based one. But we have a ton of members who are also plant ladies. And while I am not uh, a keeper of plants... I need to learn from them so that we can have more plants in the house because I realize that they make me very happy. Okay, so we do have a gardening clinic every week, um, but while we are on quarantine, I will be holding virtual classes. This will be shared in the group. So you all are actually getting something before my group does. This will be shared in the group, and then we will continue with our uh, curriculum. So, for example, we learned how to read a seed packet. We learned how to do one form of planting with soil blocking. This is the second type of planting with uh, pellets. And then next week, we'll, we, we will be going live to show you how to plant in containers like these. And your um, seed pots that look like, um, re, like, like, what do you call them? Cardboard that you may find in your neighborhood uh, garden, nursery, or now Aldi sells them. Imagine that. So we'll show you how to do best. And then alternative ways to start seeds um, for winter sowing and uh, using like your red solo cups and your cling wrap and things around your house because you don't have to always go out and purchase this type of stuff. You can use what you have and you can still be um, great with it, okay? And if that's all, those are all the questions. <laughs> Someone is making fun of my computer. We're having a heck of a time over this way. Anybody else have questions? No? Okay, here we go. So, Jessica, I saw that you asked if these were all for small seeds. No. Oh, yes. For all, for all small seeds, you do, you do plant multiple, even for your tomatoes and your pepper plants. You do want to make sure that you're planting um, more than, more than uh, one because you want to make sure that you have at least one plant per pot that germinates. Okay. What's germinating? Rihanna, what do you mean? Oh, I'll put a I'll put a dibbler in in the in the Amazon store. There's a ruler, Jessica, that spaces out your plants. So you can put it down on the soil and it gives you the measurements properly. Um, I happen to think that the ruler is overkill because, you know, you can eye it um, or you can just buy a regular ruler and, and do it that way. Uh, but I have uh, what's called the seeding square also for the square foot garden where we put it in the square feet and that shows us where to plant exactly. Oh, germination. Germination is when the seed breaks open, right? So you have a seed and it has a hard outer shell. Thank you. It has a hard outer shell. And when you apply the right conditions, which is your soil, your heat, and your water, the cell opens up, sends out a root first, 
and then the leaves pop up from that from that seed and that's when you know you have germination when you actually see a green leaf or two above the above the soil so we planted zinnia plants this is germination this is penelope's um project right now i have not helped her with this at all she wanted to grow flowers so we're seeing how they go these are not true leaves and i know you're looking at it and you say well they look like leaves that's actually from inside of the seed it's the part that shoots up um kind of like the meat if you think about a baby, uh, I will get you proper terminology. It's escaping me right now. But this is what feeds the plant. You'll see that the middle has the true leaves stop uh, starting. So that's the second set of leaves. And you know that you're, you're successfully growing something. And then these will get smaller. The first leaves that you saw pop out will get smaller as they feed the plant. And then end up shriveling off and... Um, shriveling and falling off or they will just go into uh, seed production production the plant production the seeding square which i use for square foot gardening and i know you're looking at this can you get the there should be an orange dibbler that goes with it so it comes with a little funnel that typically stops right here is stored right here when we're in storage and then the dibbler for it goes right here but remember when i told you that in square foot gardening you have the ability to plant up to 16 plants or one. The red shows 16, so there would be four plants across a square foot by four, 16. Or you can do nine, where the yellow is, or four larger ones, um, or one in the middle, okay? The one in the middle is typically for your larger plants like cabbage, collard greens, um, uh, melons, watermelon, cantaloupe, all of those items, pepper plants typically are one because they, they come up so far. Your 16, where you can fit 16 plants into one square, are typically your arugula, your mesclun uh, lettuce. Um, what else? You can do radishes, 16 in, in, a, in a, a square foot, and I'm blanking. Um, small carrots. carrots can do 16. Um, your dwarf um, dwarf kale, the curly kale, the kale that we're all used to seeing in the grocery store, not the wrinkly, um, long, thin dinosaur kale is what people call it. Uh, spinach is also good for having 16. Um, nine are typically beans, <coughs> cucumbers, um, vining things, but not squash. You don't want to have that many squash in because their root system is huge. Tomatoes, root systems, you can start a tomato plant on one far side in the corner of your raised bed and the root system will spread all the way to the other side and that's eight feet long. It can get that long. One. Four typically would be things like corn. Um, uh, we did leeks, which get pretty, pretty large because it's a root bulb. You can do onions in four. Uh, and things like that. But this helps you because it tells you exactly where you're going to plant. It also comes with a handout, uh, a thicker handout that tells you how many of the seeds go into which and, and what square to use. So it's it's uh, separated. And we It comes with the orange dibbler that has the measurements and you can put the dibbler in to make the hole in the soil and then you pour the seeds in. And that's it. And then you pick it up this way. So you're not disturbing any of the seeds that you just planted. Then you pick it up, you cover the soil, and then you move on to the second, the second um, square. Okay. And that's it. Um, yeah. If you all have any questions, you can leave it in this in this uh, comment section about what you want me to show next. Um, if you go to We Sow We Grow on Instagram. You can follow our growing there. We have gar uh, garlic that's now popping up. So we've been showing that. And we also showed one of our hens laying an egg. And we just found out that a third hen is now laying. And we think it's one of our teenagers. So she has crossed into adulthood. Um, and hopefully by the end of next month, all nine will be laying. And we'll be getting around nine eggs every single day. And they will be for sale if you want to come by after quarantine and pick up um eggs okay 
Until next time, you all keep sewing and growing. I shall talk to you later. Bye-bye.